Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our first topic this week, of course, is Tesla deliveries for the September quarter. Finished right in line with where the street was at, plus uh, 7% year over year. So this marks the first time the company has returned to growth in 2024. The March quarter was down 9%, the June down 5 so we saw a nice return to growth. The stock was up 14% in the two weeks in, uh, going into the print. The NASDAQ was up 2% during that time. And initially, shares of Tesla sold off 7%, ended up finishing the day down, call it 3 3.5%. So my view, it was a buy on the rumor, sell on the news. And the reason why I believe that is that the actual uh, numbers up 7% was particularly impressive. If you look at uh, all the majors, uh, Stellantis, GM, Ford, uh, Toyota, they all reported their U.S. ICE engines uh, were down on average 8% in the quarter. Uh, if you look at Ford, they break out their EVs. That was uh, that was up nicely. That was up 12%. Their hybrids were up, I think, 35 or 42%, much uh, faster. But this is off of a base that is about one ninth the size. If you look at just the U.S. Ford market versus the number of Tesla deliveries, and so I think the the plus seven was really uh, respectable. And at some level, I think this is all good, but it doesn't really matter because it all comes down to what have you done for me lately, and what's growth going to look like in twenty five. That's absolutely right. There's, there's two takeaways that I kind of think about. One is. In in terms of just trying to appreciate what those numbers mean, because people will find ways to be skeptical of them or or bullish about them. But the other thing I think is interesting is obviously Elon has stepped much more into uh, his political opinions, and you know that has to be somewhat of a headwind. And to post numbers like that, even right. with what is a drag going into election season, right? It's top of mind for everybody. Um, I think I think that's one thing maybe to factor in. And then now, obviously let me let me next add to that, that too. Cool down. Talked about the political speak effect. I mentioned the macro, how that was soft. And then uh, the third is that their subsidies in Europe have been declined. We looked at the top five countries that account for about 80% of Tesla sales, and they have uh, year to date declined their subsidies by about a third. And so that's been kind of this continued. So there was some pretty measurable headwinds. If this was a punky number, they would have had some excuses. Right. I agree. And, I, you know, I say that, too, as, as kind of like the, uh, the the Tesla more even keeled person, I would say, usually on our team, we're trying to find find reasons not to be optimistic. But I think it is worth just calling out. There are some some headwinds where, there that are totally fair to recognize. The other thing, though, that I, I would pick up on, if we kind of rewind the clock back to the summer, the original date of of the uh, Robo Day, right, of the Autonomy Day, um, if you recall back to that point, I believe Tesla was on a run where it was up like 50% in a month or something like that. It had an incredible run roughly to that magnitude. Mm -hmm. And people right. were so excited about the event. Here, it feels a little bit different of a setup going into the prior date versus the current date next week. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that you know next week is going to be a layup for Tesla at all. I don't think that that's the case. But certainly last time, I think expectations had been so high kind of going into the event it does feel like maybe they're a little bit more uh you know normalized let's say i for appreciate the event yeah that's the right approach so let's turn the page let's talk about next week and kind of that preview to the robo taxi event we're expecting three vehicles most people expect two of course the robo taxi the twenty five thousand dollar model two and then some sort of a van, kind of a at 10, uh, eight to 10 passenger. This comes from a graphic that the company put up at their investor day a year and a half ago that kind of had this uh, shrouded vehicle that looked kind of like a, a sprinter or some sort of a van. And so uh, that's that's our guess. We're going to take the, the, the three. But at the end of the day, as I keep thinking about this event, I, it's going to be fun in the sense of like an uh, investor and somebody who is so deeply involved in tech for us to see what comes out like that undoubtedly is going to be fun. But from an investor standpoint, I don't think the event's going to have uh, much meaning for it. All that's going to matter is the timing that he's going to say when these vehicles are going to be out and whatever timing he says, people are going to add a year or two onto it. And so mm -hmm. I think people are going to be excited to see it, but I don't think there's much that's going to really change uh, the the context, unless he says, I told you we're going to start ramping early in 25, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to ramp in the new Model 2 early in 25. 
then the stock is probably going to move higher on that. It would move higher. But if he comes out and says the this cheaper model is going to start ramping late in 25 and and kind of through the back half of 26, I think it's probably people are probably going to yawn and say, we know what your strategy is. We know you're going hard on autonomy. But until we see these products actually get to the market, I think a lot of investors are just going to, uh, this is kind of a show me story from the autonomy perspective. I think that's 100% right. I think uh, going into the event next week, if you're hoping that that is in and of itself, some sort of a catalyst to really get the stock moving, I think the odds are that, that that's probably not going right. to be the outcome. And it's a party. I mean, this is a, a real, this is not analysts with their laptops turned on and investors kind of uh, scouring over these models. This is Elon coming out on stage. They'll show some demo of the RoboTaxi wandering around some of these, what is Warner Brothers, their back lot. Um, I'm going to be going. I'm super excited to be there, but I just want to be clear. This is a party. 100%. So uh, let's, let's jump to uh, our second topic which is uh, related to OpenAI. They raised uh, a bunch of dough, call it six, seven billion, 157 billion valuation. The previous valuation earlier this, early this year was in the high 80s. So nice step up, uh, kind of getting their legs. But uh, the big question that keeps orbiting the story is just what do you use AI for? Like what are the, the true use cases? And uh, as, as we think about that, I mean, this is something that's near and dear to us at Deepwater. It is, and and we've even you know launched a company we've talked about before, Intelligent Alpha. And one of the best learnings I think from launching Intelligent Alpha, which is really the world's first asset manager built to use large language AI models to do all of the investment selection. The the learning from that is we get these questions about when will AI start to show value, and I think the answer is now. It's sometimes it's just a little bit hard to see because it might be hidden. And I always like to use this specific example. For Intelligent Alpha, I mean, the mission, the goal, the vision in the long run is to build a trillion dollar AUM asset management firm, all powered by AI, the AI powered BlackRock. And that's a decade long vision. But if you put that into context, you look at an asset manager like T. Rowe Price, they have $1.5 billion in assets under management. They have 800 PMs and analysts, so a huge staff that is managing all the funds that they offer to their customers. That's probably something like a quarter billion dollars or maybe even more in terms of annualized spend. At that same asset level, I think Intelligent Alpha could manage that amount of money with a dozen or so analysts and PMs. And so- So let's know, just get the, could... the from and to again, thousands to a dozen? Yeah, 800 to probably a dozen just using AI with the process we use. Obviously we have a different process. We're and, not going and out and comparable results. To do... I guess that's the, the substance is going to be what the performance is. Ultimately you have to have the performance. That's absolutely right. And we have to prove that over time. And that's why it will be this sort of decade long journey. But I think about that example, when we get this question of when will AI show value to me, that is how AI will show value in time. It's companies like intelligent alpha that can build without the need of huge human capital and infrastructure to get to the same place. And what also I think is important to understand from that example is even if a company like T. Rowe Price or someone else outside of the financial services industry were to say, look, we want to use AI and we want to make our workers more efficient. We want to make our processes more efficient. In That's what everybody's cases, saying, by the way. Everybody is saying that, but here's the thing that I think people are missing. Politically, it's hard to go fire a bunch of people because even if AI works, then are you going to go say, well, hey, we can go cut 10% of our labor for us because we installed AI. That's a bad look for a CEO. And so I actually think there's something we <laughs> should all be cognizant of here, which is as AI does get implemented in enterprise and as it does show value, it may be hidden just by the fact that we can't go and pull out some of that labor and save some of those costs right away because of political reasons. Makes a ton of sense. I would add one other reason why I think asset managers are slow to embrace AI making the decisions is that there's a whole question about how does this change the business model on the buy, uh, for asset managers. And from our perspective, uh, we also believe that there will be a need. The majority of assets will be managed by humans, but a, a large percentage, 10, 20% will be eventually managed by the machine, entirely by the machine. And it's zero today, effectively. And so 
Uh, super exciting. Uh, love your piece that you put out on the adventure. We've been on adventure for 15 plus years here and super excited about where we can take intelligent alpha. We're going to wrap on those two topics uh, and we'll be back to you next week. Uh, fresh off of a red eye coming back from that event in, uh, in, uh, in LA on the We Robot Tesla event. On behalf of Doug and I, bye for now.